everyone. In the last class, we started with the formation of partial differential equations by eliminating the arbitrary constants. Today also, we are doing few problems based on uh, formation of partial differential equation by eliminating the arbitrary constants. Welcome. Now let us check the first question. Form a PDE by eliminating the arbitrary constants of x minus a the whole square plus y minus b the whole square is equal to z square into cot square alpha where alpha is a constant. So you are given a particular question x minus a the whole square plus y minus b the whole square is equal to z square into cot square alpha where alpha is a constant. So in this question at a glance we may think there are three arbitrary constants, isn't it? What are they? A, B and alpha. But it is specified particularly alpha is given as a constant. So what are the arbitrary constants? A and B, uh, these are the two arbitrary constants. See in the uh, last class I mentioned one important note and th that is uh, if the number of arbitrary constants to be eliminated equal to the number of independent variables, then you will get a first order PDE. If the number of arbitrary constants to be eliminated is greater than the number of independent variables, then your PDE may contain second order partial derivatives. That means your PDE may contain P, Q, R, S and T. Remember, R, S and T, these three are second order partial derivatives. Therefore, in this question, A and B, the number of arbitrary constants to be eliminated. What are the uh, two arbitrary constants? Only A and B. And how many independent variables? He said is a function of X and Y. So, independent variables are two. Okay, so number of arbitrary constants is equal to number of uh, independent variables. So the required PDE should be a first order PDE. Okay, now how can we eliminate these two arbitrary constants? Now let us examine this. First you put the given equation as equation number 1. Now differentiate this equation with respect to x. So what we will get? x minus a the whole square whose derivative is 2 into x minus a, y minus b whole square since we are in the differentiating with respect to x, this becomes 0 and z square cot square alpha on the, the differentiating z square, see z square, we know z contains x and y, so z square when you are differentiating z square whose derivative is 2 z into its derivative with respect to x, that is dou z by dou x into cot square alpha. And from both sides we can cancel 2. So x minus a is equal to z into, see dou z by dou x already we know this symbolic representation of dou z by dou x that can be replaced by small p into cos square alpha. Okay. So let me put this as equation number 2. Okay. Now who does the next step? Again equation 1 we are differentiating with respect to y. Differentiating equation 1 with respect to y. Therefore, what about the first term? x minus a whole square. Since we are differentiating with respect to y, the derivative of the first term will be 0. And y minus b whole square whose derivative is 2 into y minus b equal to z square whose derivative 2 z into its derivative dou z by dou y into cos square alpha. But dou z by dou y this can be replaced by q. And from both sides we can cancel 2. Therefore y minus b equal to z q into cot square alpha. You can put it as equation number 3. So what we did in this question? Uh, the given equation is equation number 1. We differentiated it with respect to x and with respect to y. And formed the two different equations. And this is equation 2 and equation 3. Now what is the next step? See, can we put equation 2 and equation 3 in the given equation? Equation number 1. Equation 1 contains x minus a and y minus b. And from 2 and 3, we obtain the same expression for x minus a and x minus b. So, the next step is 
you substitute equation 2 and equation 3 in first equation. Therefore, the first term, see x minus a the whole square, x minus a the whole square, x minus a is replaced by z p cot square alpha. So, z p cot square alpha the whole square plus y minus b whole square, y minus b is this. So, z, z q cot square alpha the whole square equal to what is the right side? It is z square cot square alpha. Okay, so you just substituted in the given equation. Now, this is whole square. Therefore, z square p square. Now, cot square whole square. Cot square whole square, what is it? It is cot raised to 4 alpha plus. Again, z square q square cot square the whole square. It is cot raised to 4 alpha equal to z square cot square alpha. Now we can simplify. See everywhere we have z, z square. So that get cancelled. Then cot, cot raised to 4 alpha is common for these two terms. So that can be taken outside. Cot raised to 4 alpha and the remaining is p square in the first term and q square in the second term. That is equal to cot square alpha. Now cot square alpha from both sides we can cancel one cot square alpha. So the remaining is here only cot square. That we can push into the RHS. Therefore, what we will get? It is P square plus Q square is equal to you move cot square to the other side. So it is 1 by cot square alpha. And 1 by cot square alpha is nothing but it is tan square alpha, right? Therefore, the final PD is P square plus Q square is equal to tan square alpha. Okay, so this is the required first order partial differential equation. Now the second question, this is very important. Form a PDE of all planes which are at constant distance A from origin. See, in this question, the equation is not given. We have to form equation first, then by differentiating and eliminating the arbitrary constants, we should make the PDE. Okay, so the first step is what is the equation of all planes which are at constant distance A from the origin. Okay, remember the equation of a plane is given by Lx plus Ny plus Nz is equal to A. See, you are given it is at constant distance A from the origin. So, you can take Lx plus Ny plus Nz is equal to the constant A. Now, what about L, M and N? What are they? L, M, N, these are directional cosines of normal from origin to the plane. L, M, N are directional cosines. And we have a relation connecting L, M and N. And what is the relation? It satisfies L square plus M square plus N square is equal to 1. This is the condition. L square plus M square plus N square should be equal to 1. Okay. Now, see this is our equation. Lx plus Ny plus Nz is equal to A. For this equation, how many arbitrary constants are there? A you are given A as a fixed constant. So, we may think L, M and N. There are three arbitrary constants. But, remember, since we have the relation L square plus N square plus N square equal to 1, one of the constant, arbitrary constant can be expressed in terms of the other. For example, you can write N square as 1 minus N square minus N square or any of these constant, arbitrary constant, one of them can be expressed in terms of other two. Okay, therefore how many arbitrary constants actually we have in this equation? There are only two arbitrary constants. So here I wrote the number of arbitrary constants. How many arbitrary constants? Only two arbitrary constants. I wrote there L, M. Why? Why N is excluded? N can be written in terms of L and M. Now, 
what about number of independent variables? Always we are considering z as a function of x and y, right? Therefore, uh, number of independent variables equal to 2 x and y. Now remember the note. Here number of arbitrary constants equal to number of independent variables. Okay, if these two are equal, we will get a first order PDE. That means equation should contain only P and Q. Okay, we can differentiate this with respect to X and again with respect to Y. That's all. Okay, now I substituted this as equation 1. Now, what was happening? When you are differentiating this equation with respect to X, LX becomes L plus MY. The derivative was 0. N we said N into Z that uh, the derivative dou Z by dou X equal to A whose derivative was 0. Then dou Z by dou X by the symbolic representation it can be replaced by P. Therefore L plus N P equal to 0. From this we will get an expression for L. L is equal to minus N P. Put it as equation 2. Again. We can differentiate equation 1 one more time with respect to y also. Okay. So, on differentiating Lx will be 0. Young y is m plus n z plus n into dou z by dou y. That is equal to 0. A whose derivative is 0. From this, m plus n q. See, q is dou z by dou y equal to 0. From this, m is equal to minus n q and put it as equation 3. So, we have 3 equations, 1, 2 and 3 equations and you can use these 3 equations to eliminate L and L. How? Now, for that, you take the first equation, start with the first equation. What is uh, the first equation is Lx plus my plus n is equal to A. A can be written as A into 1, no problem, no? And that 1 is 1, we can write, if uh, what is happening when we are adding root 1, it is 1 itself. Okay, but inside the square root, that 1 can be replaced by this expression, see this expression. L square plus N square plus N square will be 1. Okay, so inside the square root, what I did is, I wrote instead of 1, the same expression, root of L square plus N square plus N square. See why we are writing all these things? We should get in a particular manner. Otherwise, uh, while we are forming the partial differential equation, again L or M may will occur. Okay, so that's why I told you instead of writing 1, you just write root 1. Now, see instead of L, go to the substitution. L is from second equation minus NP. So, Lx becomes minus NPx. My M is minus NQ, right? NQ, it is NQ, so NQY plus N is said is equal to A into square root of 1 will be root of N square plus N square plus N square. Now, the simplification part. See, everywhere we have N, so N can be taken outside into minus PX minus QY plus E Z is equal to A into here also for L and M you substitute the same thing. So on squaring that negative sign get cancelled. So A into square root of N square P square plus N square Q square plus N square and you can see N square is common in all the terms. So N square from the square root you are taking N square. So it will be N and from both sides N get cancelled. Is it clear? So, this n and from the square root n square we are taking. Okay, so that n get these two n get cancelled. So, remaining is z minus. He said I wrote z that since it is positive I wrote it as the first term. So, z minus px minus qy is equal to, so after cancelling n square, a into root of p square plus q square plus 1. Therefore, the final answer is E z is equal to, you can shift minus px and minus qy to the other side. So, z is equal to px plus qy plus a into square root of p square plus q square plus 1. And this is the final partial differential equation and which is independent of L, M and L. Okay, it is very important. Now, similar type of question. 
find PDE of all planes having equal intercept on x and y axis. Here also directly the equation is not given but the hint is given. See, first you have to consider the equation of planes having equal intercept on x and y axis. So what is the equation of such a plane? The equation of the plane is given by x by a plus y by b plus e side by c equal to 1 x by a plus y by b plus z by c equal to 1. This is the equation of a plane. Okay. Having equal intercept on x and y axis. So what about x intercept and y intercept? Both are equal. That means you are given a equal to b. So instead of taking x by a plus y by b plus z by c, you have to take a equal to b. So the modified equation will be in this case, x by a plus y by a itself, y by a plus z by c equal to 1. So this is the required uh, equation of a plane having equal intercept. Now look at this equation. How many arbitrary constants are present? How many arbitrary constants? Number of arbitrary constants equal to 2. What are they? a and c. And what about number of independent variables? Always z can be taken as a function of x and y. So how many uh, independent variables are there? Only two independent variables. They are x and y. Now coming to formation of PDE. So our aim is to eliminate a and c. Okay. Since these two are equal, arbitrary constants and independent variables are the same, we should get a PDE of first order. That means it should contain P and Q only. Okay. So, the first equation we can differentiate with respect to, partially with respect to x. So, differentiating 1 partially with respect to x gives x by a becomes 1 by a plus y by a it becomes 0. Why? Since we are differentiating it with respect to x. Plus, e said on differentiating dou z by dou x, its new name is small p. So, p by c equal to 1 whose derivative is 0. From this, we will get an expression for 1 by a. See the expression? 1 by a is equal to minus p by c. You keep it there. And you can, if you want, you can put it as equation number 2. Okay? We can use it later. Now, again, equation 1, we are differentiating with respect to y. The same equation 1, we are differentiating with respect to y. So, x by a will be 0 y by a is 1 by a only plus z by c. z we are differentiating with respect to y so dou z by dou y is and then that is uh, replaced by q. So q by c equal to 0. 1 whose derivative is 0. And from this also we will get an expression for 1 by a right. So 1 by a is equal to minus q by c put it as equation 3. So now we have these three equations, 1, 2 and 3, 3 equations. Our aim is to eliminate A and C. How? At once, when we are checking equation 2 and 3, you just see, I think you got the answer. 2 and 3, what about LHS? 1 by A. From in both equations, 1 by A, we have on LHS. LHS uh, will be the same. Okay, since LHS are equal, the corresponding RHS also can be equate. So, by equating corresponding RHS, what we have? So, 2 equal to 3 gives minus P by C equal to minus Q by C. Negative sign get cancelled and C is also get cancelled. Okay. So, what we have? The final answer is P equal to Q. So, this is the required partial differential equation. I think... Uh, you understood what all I discussed today. Important problems we discussed. Thank you very much.